Hi, let me talk a little bit about a place where Elijah spent uh, part of his life. A place called a Brook Cherith. And we can learn a lot of lessons from this in our lives um, as regards waiting and at times going through trials. So I'm reading from uh, chapter 17 of uh, 1 Kings. Now Elijah the Tishbite of Tishbe and Gilead said to Ahab, As the Lord, the God of Israel, lives before whom I stand, there shall be neither dew nor rain these years, except by my word, in the words God's word. And the word of the Lord came to him, <clears throat> Depart from here, turn eastward, and hide yourself by a brook, Cherith, which is east of the Jordan. You should drink from the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord. He went and lived by the brook Cherith at the east of Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning and bread and meat in the evening. And he drank from the brook. And after a while, the brook dried up because there was no rain in the land. <clears throat> so Elijah spent a significant period of time at this place called Cherith, a little brook coming down, I think, from the hills or from the mountains. And he had been sent there by God to protect him from Ahab finding him. And being there was ravens there and, and birds carrying birds, they call it birds that sort of pick food off dead animals, they would assume that there was nobody alive there. But Cherith was a place of being in God's will. And thus he, God would provide and meet all of Elijah's needs for the time of testing and trials. So Cherith was a place of God's provision. Elijah had to rely upon God to see him through this period of time. At first sight, there appeared to be no food, and thus he could have wondered where his need of sustenance would come from. The drought that God had predicted through Elijah upon the land would have an effect upon his life, indeed his lifestyle, whilst at Cherith. Elijah was a man of faith, and I'm sure that he knew that God somehow would meet his needs. The Lord used ravens, um, a quite a large black bird, uh, that used by nature would feed on dead animals, they're called carrion. And he used ravens to provide bread and meat each day, morning and evening. You know, our Lord is able to to use and to do anything. He can use animals in our lives to fulfill his plans. You know, he can do anything. So, remember in the Bible, he used uh, the donkey that Balaam was uh, riding upon to protect him from an angel that had a sword drawn. And the donkey or the ass spoke. There are stories of children being lost in the jungle and monkeys or gorillas or orangutans um, have looked after and fed them. The key point to look at here is that God met Elijah's needs, but he only met his needs, and the key word is here, by a basic life support, a basic lifestyle, very basic, just the absolute bare needs, water, bread, meat. It is quite likely that the food Elijah received was from leftover bread, so possibly mouldy, and meat that came from recently deceased animals. Yet, of course, the ravens may have been at an army camp and taken fresh bread and meat. We shall never know. But again, the key point is basic living. So in this time of isolation and loneliness, Elijah was... Uh, to be under God's protection, and God provided, provided in food and water and shelter. But it was a time of trials and testing, faith and trust. It was going back to basics, once again, basics. In other words, there were no luxuries, no sweet tasting food, no warmth, as it were, a soft bed or comfort, creature comforts, no basic comforts, no friends and no company, except God alone. 
it was a time without any of these natural blessings that we take for granted. The time was to be spent in isolation and loneliness with only God for company and only him to talk to. We're not told how long this time lasted, but we do know that the famine and the drought lasted for three years. So I guess the brook being a small stream would have probably dried up within one year. And during this time, Elijah would have had many hours of fellowship with God as he wandered around the area. He was talking and exploring the terrain, perhaps, for anything that might make you stay a bit more comfortable. At these times, it was where God speaks to our hearts and prepares us for a blessing that he will give us, a ministry and a work that he has prepared for us. The word says that he has ordained us for good works and he has prepared for us a ministry. And he had had a ministry prepared for Elijah, the greatest uh, ministry that he would do yet. Later on, when he took on Ahab and the 400 prophets of Baal. Isolation with God and no other influence enabled the Lord to speak to his heart and prepare him for the future. The Lord does not test us forever, though we might feel like it when we're in the fire. But Elijah was soon to find out how abundant um, the blessing of God is. And the scripture says in Psalms that sorrow may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. So how can we apply Cherif to our lives? There will be times in our lives when we also go through these Cherif times. Times of famine, just basics to live on. There are times when we will feel tried and tested. Times when we feel that we cannot carry on. Times when we are hurting emotionally. Times when we are isolated from our friends. Times when the joy of life seems to have departed from us. Times when health is not best. Times when we do not have much cash. All these times we can call those cherif times. They are times when the Lord is with us, but we are but there are times when we do not have the luxury or household comforts, the basic we're only on basic food. Uh, we're living just getting by, and it seems just existing or getting by day by day. We wouldn't say that our lives were full or overflowing. Rather, they were famished times. It is during these times that we have to wait upon God as Elijah did. Times when we have to stay put in our situation until God moves us on. And that's the key thing, I think, with Elijah. We have to stay put in our situation until God moves us on. <clears throat> during these times, we are forced to do to depend upon God for all our needs, both emotionally, physically, spiritually, mentally. Yet, at these times, we may feel so famished in many ways. Yet, we will hear God's voice. We will learn new truths from his word. We will discern his will, know his guidance. I remember such times myself. And they were, for me, the times just alone with God. No real friends, no one to be emotionally close to, no one to talk to heart to heart. I remember wandering around the hills, the moorland, or by the sea, along the coast, praying and reading God's word. Indeed, reading many pages of God's word, discovering new promises and truths to help me for the future. I experienced God's mercy and at these times, a few glimmers of his glory to help me through the long cherif experience. I grew closer to God with fellowship with him during my forced isolation. I had to endure the basic lifestyle with no one to share life with, no one to be close to, feeling as if my life was wasting away through no fault of my own. Yet the Lord showed me compassion and blessed me with some precious times with himself, which helped me through my cherif experience. Elijah remained at Cherif until God told him to move on. We also have to remain there at Cherif. It is the safest place for us and the most blessed place to be because we are in God's will. For us, that moving on would be the Lord bringing us into, out of our isolation of Cherif and into a new era of blessing. 
I can assure you that if you remain in your Cherith, God will do wonderful things for you as he rewarded um, me for what, I, for what I went through. So back to Elijah, what happened next? We read about the widow of Zarephath. In verse 8, the word of the Lord came to him, Arise, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. Behold, behold I have commanded a widow to feed you there. So for Elijah, all things suddenly changed. God moved him on. Here is Zarephath. Elijah was safe, again in God's will, just as much as at Cherith. But Zarephath was a place of God's provision, his peace and comfort, luxury and company. Elijah had endured and waited patiently at Cherif for God to deliver him from a drying up brook and a feeling of desperation as the waters ran out. For you, as it was for me, the Lord will bless you for waiting at Cherif, as he did again for me. You will no longer live that basic lifestyle, just surviving. God will bless you with new friendships and ministry, a spouse if you are asking faith for one, or anything that you have asked for in God's faith, in faith, and waited for a long time for. Enduring your time at Cherif will result in a time of blessing. So be prepared for wonderful things, even amazing things, to happen for you in the future. Even though at the present there seems to be nothing but trials and poverty in your life. Have patience for a little longer and do not give up. Do not let this famine cause you to lose sight of the wonderful blessings due for you soon. I had to endure my Cherif for a long time. And I can tell you the truth, that it was worth waiting for, beyond all I could ask or imagine. May you be encouraged to endure.